Good morning and welcome to Bible Baptist Church Online this morning. Uh, we're so excited for our service and we want to say a big thank you to all of you who are joining us uh, online this morning. We're glad to have you and thanks for taking time to be a part of our service. I hope that you'll take a minute right now. Comment down below. Let us know that you're here, that you're with us this morning. Uh, maybe take a moment to share the service with a friend, uh, but we're looking forward to an awesome time together. We're looking forward to having our service start here at our church in just a little bit as well. And we're glad that those of you who join us online, the service today and the, the series that Pastor Yomas is doing is all about uh, the church and the importance of church. And today he's going to talk about community and how, mm -hmm. how this church is a community of believers. Yeah. And you know what? We've really enjoyed that over the last few weeks as we've uh, begun to safely return to uh, it, some in-person gatherings. Uh, to be able to see some people again and, and as well be able to continue to connect with you guys online and have a bit more of a sense of community that we, uh, we really missed over the last uh, few months. And it made us kind of think back and remember all the awesome times that we've had together as a unit, as a community of people here in St. Thomas. And uh, we were thinking this week maybe just about some of the, the fun memories and experiences that we've had here at church. Yeah, so maybe as you sit there, maybe think about something funny that you have seen or happened to you in church and throw it in the comments there if you're part of our church or a different church, doesn't matter. Just know, let us know something funny maybe that happened in church. And we were talking today uh, about uh, not too long ago where we, uh, I think I was given the announcements at the time, and we had our first ever nursery breakout. That's right. right. There. And so right down the center aisle came uh, Harrison. And so Harrison broke out the nursery that night we had to stop the service it was a good time and we had a good laugh about that and maybe you guys noticed we were thinking too a couple weeks ago on on live stream right here in the front row we had uh zoe yeomans with her feet up in the air uh, uh bottom of her feet straight to the sky and now we had a laugh too watching the the service back and and um, I remember one memory for me that was fun a few years ago. Uh, this is what, well, Pastor Stone, our former pastor, was still pastoring. And he did a message on a Sunday night about David and Goliath. And he had uh, Daryl Holmes, who helps in our sound booth. He had him wear drywall stilts and get him to the exact yeah. height of Goliath. And he had to duck down to get through the door. And he walked around the auditorium to give us a visual for how big Goliath was. And that, that was a fun memory, too. <laughs> and there's lots of stories of uh, uh, saying the thing, wrong thing at the wrong time that we can't tell uh, to you <laughs> right, right now. But uh, if you're part of our church, you know that you just never know what's going to come out, what's going to happen at church. And so I think, too, it's pretty cool that with all that's going on, all the changes, we now have a church community and we have an online community. And so uh, we've been able to expand that. And we're excited about expanding even our online presence. We've got some new cameras. That's more Pastor Levi's area of expertise, but we're looking forward to those changes. Yeah, we've uh, ordered some new cameras. Um, with everything going on, they've been a little bit kind of delayed, but we're hoping to get them ASAP. We're hoping to have them for this week, but, but maybe hopefully for next week. But we're excited to have some, some new cameras to make it even a better watching experience as well. And it's cool to have, um, even though we're maybe apart in uh, location, we could be together in spirit, uh, learning together through the Word of God and worshiping together no matter where we are. And so that's an awesome thing. And maybe for you, it's not a funny story, but maybe you have a, a memory of an awesome event or experience uh, that you remember at church. And comment that down below as well. We'd love to hear what your favorite memory is at church. Yeah, we were talking that of things that our church does on a regular basis. And this last week would have been our help week. And so yeah. for those of you who don't know that, we lead a program. We get other churches in the area involved, and we go to a different city. We were supposed to be in Mississauga this year. Mm -hmm. And we do community car washes, community giveaways. We clean up the community in parks and different things. We hold uh, a good barbecue, a community barbecue on the Saturday. So all kinds of community events that our church usually leads, but this year we had to put those on hold for, uh, for right now. Uh, but it's still good memories for our church what we've been involved in. For sure. And for myself and Aloma working in the, the youth ministry, we've had to miss out on a few of our favorite teen activities. We've been talking with the teenagers online about those. And uh, normally we're, we're gearing up here soon for our summer trip. We usually head to Wonderland and stay somewhere in a hotel. And those are some great, great memories and things that we're looking forward to being able to do again. Um, and hopefully, and, and uh, those are some awesome times that we can look back on as well. Also, just remember this week we have things that are going on. We do have our kids' church program that should be live and, and able to be watched on our Facebook page. We have Zoom classes coming up on Wednesday night as well. And then on Sunday, I still have an Upstream Teens, right? Yep, Sunday night at 6 p.m. on Instagram, at Upstream Teens. We're going to be uh, finishing up our series in Philippians, and so we've enjoyed that. Uh, as well as Pastor Yeomans will be going live on Facebook at 7, uh, continuing our study in 1 John about knowing God, and that's been an awesome study for our church as well. And uh, I do want to encourage you before the service begins this morning, 
morning, if you're new to our church, to take a moment to click the link in the description, fill out a connection card, and uh, if you have any questions for our staff, or it's just a good way for you to connect with our church. All right, it's about time to start the service, so we're glad that you've joined us. Hope you enjoy the preaching. It touches your heart this morning. Good morning and welcome to church. It's so great to see you. We want to welcome you all here. We want to welcome all those who are joining us online this morning as well. Uh, we're looking forward to celebrating the love of God this morning. So if you would, stand and we're going to begin by singing a great song. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. A pilgrim was I and a wandering in the cold night of sin I did roll. Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days. 
restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the He's gone to prepare. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. You know, it's true. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. And sometimes life is going to have its ups, and sometimes it has its downs. But we know that God's faithful through the ups and downs, through the good times and the storms. So let's sing together till the storm passes by. In the dark of the midnight, have I oft hid my face while the storm up in that last verse when the long night when the long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee when the storm passes by Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast and let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. God is truly good to us in good times and bads. He's with us day by day. So let's lift our voices and sing that together day by day. Day by day, with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my 
trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day, every day, the Lord himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would clear and cheer me, he whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. All thy days your strength shall be in measure the pledge to me. Let's lift up in that last verse, help me then. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith, sweet consolation, offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble me to take as from a father's hand one by one the days the moments fleeting till i reach that promised land amen great singing today you may be seated all right, good morning. So glad that you're here this morning, and we're glad that you chose to join us here in the house of the Lord. And we every week we try to make it as normal and as safe as possible. And so we already had one service here this morning, had a good crowd already the first service, and then we sanitized everything for you. So you're coming in clean, all right, and everything's good. And we've had one service to practice. So the preaching should get better, the music should get better, the announcements should all get better after one time of practice. But we're glad that you chose to come today to the house of God. Also, I'd like to welcome those who join us online. We're glad to have you as well. And our online presence is continuing to stay steady. We're glad that those, even some of our members who have moved away, that can watch now and enjoy our service, uh, even from our remote places. So we're th thankful for that. This is the time we try to give you some good news. And so I do have some good news for you. In case you have not heard, uh, Kayla Worm had a baby yesterday. And Kayla had a baby girl, all right? And so very healthy. And her name is uh, Isla Faith, right? Isla Faith, eight pounds, two ounces, and healthy and everybody's doing well. So we're thankful for that. And that is good news. And we still have some waiting to have babies and we're still praying for them. All right. And uh, during this hot weather, nice temperature today, nice breezy day out there. So after the service, you want a fellowship outside, that's fine. But uh, a nice day for that. Also some good news, uh, Bearing Precious Seed, our Bible distribution ministry. We have uh, a shipment came up from West Virginia of Bibles to, to send out. And we're um, handing those on Tuesday and we're getting those ready to ship out. When we ship out all that we have in our warehouse, which is about 320, 330,000 John and Romans, when we finish those up, we will have finished all of Ontario. That's a big milestone to think of all of the people. Every mailbox in Ontario would have gotten a, a John and Romans from our warehouse, and that's incredible. Uh, the uh, seven or seven and a half million almost that we've done, uh, all of Ontario will be done. And we're even talking about doing an extra million here in St. Thomas because there's many new subdivisions. In case you haven't noticed, there's houses popping up all over the place, and we want to have a part in getting them the gospel as well. So that is our gospel distribution ministry. It's going well. Thank you for those who come out on Tuesday. Remember those who come on Tuesday, this Tuesday we're going to shoot a video, all right? So uh, comb your hair before you come, dress up a little bit before you come. You'll be on the video this week, this Tuesday, all right? Uh, I'll also remind you of our online content every week. We put uh, our evening service on at 7 o'clock. We have a, a Bible study on Wednesday we put on. We have a, a devotional throughout the week that we put on there as well. Uh, the teens have stuff. So there's all kinds of online content. So go to our Facebook page and enjoy that throughout the, the week. Right now we're only meeting on Sunday mornings as a church. 
Uh, there was a time where we met three times, four times a week, and we can't do that right now. So online content is there for you. Hope you'll enjoy that and take advantage of that. But we do love meeting together as a body, and I know the body is kind of split right now. We have the 9.15 people and the 11 o'clock people, and sometimes some of you go back and forth between the two to see everybody. That's great. But I hope that you enjoy that. Uh, so that's some good news. Let me give you a bit of a, a prayer request. Lindsay Love, a member of our church, uh, is in the hospital with congestive heart failure. So you pray for Mary and Lindsay. We just found out about that yesterday. Pastor Ian was able to talk to him uh, through the phone there. Obviously, we can't go to visit, but you pray for Lindsay, if you would, and Mary at this time. All right, we're excited about what God's going to do. We're looking forward to worshiping together. Pastor Ian is going to come preach for us. Thank you very much. Would you take your Bibles with me and turn to Acts chapter 2? Acts chapter 2. And uh, I did get a chance to talk to Lindsay Love, and uh, he was glad to be in the hospital. Mrs. Love um, was telling him for a week or so, she said, that he needed to get to the hospital. So she kind of gave him the ultimatum on Wednesday and uh, said, you need to get into the hospital. So he did, and he's been there since. I heard talk that he might come home today. But um, if you are thinking about them, would you just give them a call and just let them know uh, that you're thinking about them and praying for them. And then uh, one other bad uh, piece of information is that there's a gentleman that's been coming to our primetime group um, named Dave Ayton. And Dave actually passed away this week and um, was not um, the easiest of things. And uh, I was able to talk to him. Uh, oof, not that long ago. I was on the phone with him while he was in the hospital, and we had a good conversation. And uh, But if you would pray for the Aiton family. Um, I know this is one of John Wiggins' uh, friends and one of the guys he hangs out with often at the office. Um, so if you would just pray for the Aiton family uh, this week as well. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 with me. Appreciate everyone coming. Appreciate you joining us online. Thank you so much for that. We, we appreciate that you, uh, we have that opportunity. Um, again, 10, 15 years ago, this wasn't even a thought. And so we're just so thankful for that opportunity. Well, life. What do you think about life? Uh, life is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Nobody likes to talk about death, but nonetheless, we're not talking about death today. We're talking about life. Life has been said that it is a journey. Life is a journey. In fact, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13 tells us that many of our forefathers knew that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. They were just passing through this time, and there's a song that actually refers to that as well. But as we travel through this life, we get the lucky, wonderful privilege of choosing the people with whom we travel. If you're married here today, you have chosen your spouse. I don't think anybody was forced into that decision, not here in North America. We don't usually have that problem, but most of us chose our spouse. None of us got to choose our parents. What a bummer, eh? How many of you would have chose different parents? No, don't, don't answer that question. Come on now. I would not have chose different parents. My parents were awesome. They were great. I love them. And I have taken on much of who they are. We don't get to choose our parents, but we do get to choose our friends. We do get to choose the church to which we incorporate ourselves. We do get to choose our spouse. We get to choose a lot of different things, a lot of different companions in our life. And so it's important whom we choose. We have the opportunity to do so. An author by the name of Matthew Kelly wrote this. The people we surround ourselves with either raise or lower our standards. They either help us to become the best version of ourselves, or they encourage us to become a lesser version of ourselves. We all need people in our lives who raise our standards, remind us of our essential purpose, and challenge us to become the best version of ourselves. You see, who you surround yourself with is extremely important. Extremely important. The community of people you have around you is important for you to fulfilling your essential purpose for your life. Being the best child of God you can be. And guess what? The church is designed to be that community. The church, God's church, he designed it to be that type of community. A community of people doing life together. Spending time together, knowing each other, helping each other become the very best version of themselves that they possibly can be. They draw from each other. They challenge one another. That's what the church is designed to be. It's designed to be a community. A community is a people, a group of people that you have chosen to be with. 
Nobody's forced you into it. Nobody's held a gun to your head and said, you must be a part of this community. No, you've chosen to be there. Where we live currently, guess what? We chose that place. We visited several other homes. We've looked at several other... We chose that place to live. We've chosen that community. Listen, we get to choose our community, our traveling companions. We hope that you have chosen them because they are humble, helpful members. Listen, the people I want around me are people that are humble. Not people that are out for themselves, but people that are humble that want to help people. I want people around me that will encourage me, that will support me, that will lift me up, that will tell me when I'm wrong, that will tell me how I'm wrong and how to do better. That's the type of community that we should have. I ran across a fable by Aesop. It's Aesop, one of Aesop's fables, wrote thousands of them. And I want to read it to you this morning. It's called The Bear and the Two Travelers. Two men were traveling together when a bear suddenly met them on their path. One of them climbed up quickly into a tree and concealed himself in the branches. The other, seeing that he must be attacked, fell flat on the ground. When the bear came up and felt him with his snout and smelt him all over, he held his breath and feigned the appearance of death as much as he could. The bear soon left him, for it is said that he will not touch a dead body. When he was quite gone, the other traveler descended from the tree and jokingly inquired of his friend what it was the bear had whispered in his ear. He gave me this advice, the companion replied. Never travel with a friend who deserts you at the approach of danger. Never travel with a friend who deserts you at the approach of danger. I want you to understand this morning that if we are not careful... We can be that type of traveling companion. We can be the type of traveling companion that deserts people when they need us most. And I I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I can almost guarantee you that the church has been that to some people. That when some people needed the church the most, the church was not there for them. The church saw them and said, "Uh, you know what, you've gone too far, or we don't want to deal with that. And the church has almost been more of of a repelling agent than a community agent. I hate to say that. Maybe this church has been that for you, I don't know. If it has, we want to apologize. We want to be a community that helps and that supports If it's not been this church, it has been other churches in our world. It happens. It's terrible. It's not something that we want to do. We don't want to leave people high and dry. That is not the biblical community that God has prescribed. On the other side of that coin, though, however, there's parts of the body who have left the body when danger approached. I'm not even talking about necessarily COVID-19 because all of us basically didn't meet physically. Most of us, <laughs> most of us ha- had to stay home. We came here and we did church. That's not exactly what I'm talking about when, oh, all of a sudden COVID's here, so we all have to disperse. But what happens is we get into this position where something bad happens in our life or we're going through a rough time, and any time that happens, we leave the body because we don't want to be around people. You've probably all been there. Man, I'm just really struggling. Something really bad happened this week. The last place I want to be is around people. I don't want them asking me how my week was because I don't want to tell them what actually happened. Can I challenge you with this as well? That is not the biblical community that God has prescribed. In fact, what should be happening is all of us ought to be saying, listen, I'm hurting. I'm going through a rough time. I need someone to talk to. I need to come around people. I need people to encourage me. I need them. Every one of us ought to be looking at our lives and asking this simple question. Am I a good traveling companion? Am I someone that people want around them? Am I a productive member of this community? Am I expecting people to serve me? Or am I expecting to serve people? 
I want to give you this message that we've entitled, We Are a Community. We are a community. That's what this is. That's what Bible Baptist Church ought to be. A community. A community of people. What, what makes a good community? What makes a good community? Well, let me give you just simply one thing. Commonality. Things in common. Listen, why in the world would you ever marry someone that you have nothing in common with? You're not going to get along. Why would you be friends with someone that you don't have anything in common with? You want to have things in common with people. You want to spend that time in the same commonality. That's what makes a good community. Commonality. I want to give you three things this morning that the church ought to have in common and that does have, they do have in common. Though we all have different backgrounds, though we all have come from different areas, we all have these three things, hopefully, in common. Number one, we have in common the common salvation. Common salvation. Jude, verse 3, said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto, unto the saints. The fact of the matter is this, there is a common salvation. As I look across this room, the majority of us that I know well have a common salvation. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We realize that He came to this earth as the spotless Lamb of God. That He came and He died on the cross. He arose three days later and He lives with God now. And He did that for all. If we have accepted that, we have a common salvation. I had the opportunity to go to St. Lucia almost eight years ago. And though we were from different uh, backgrounds and very much different culturally, uh, we had one thing in common. We walked into church, and I remember being there, and guess what? We had the same thing in common. We were there for Jesus Christ. We were there because we had the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And guess what? They played a tambourine in church. It was awesome. It was so cool. I loved it. And there's a, the pastor played the guitar for the music. Listen, it was something different, but we had something in common. We had a common salvation. It was a common salvation, not in a, oh, it's low, it's just commonplace. No, no, as in everybody can have it. Everybody can know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You might be here this morning, or you might be listening online this morning, and you don't know that salvation. You don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know that he saved you. Listen, we would love to help you with that today. We want every person in the world to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We want you to know that Jesus died on the cross and paid the price for your sin so that you don't have to. That's the common salvation. But I want you to know this, with a common salvation, that means we have a common enemy. If you'll look again, in, uh, just let me read Jude 3, I didn't have you turn there. But at the end it says that we should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. What are we contending for? What are we contending against? Well, see, when we have a common salvation, that gives us a common enemy. A common enemy. A common enemy is very simply Satan. And Satan brings about sin. All of us have a common enemy of sin. Our sin keeps us from God. Our sin has made us an enemy of God. But when we became the children of God, guess what? Sin became our enemy. Because we now have Christ living in us. Hear me, as a community, we ought to have one enemy. A common enemy. Do you know why that's so important? Because look, as we look across our world today and we see the strife and we see the division, guess what? There's not a common enemy. Man, remember back when Germany and Japan and Italy was the common enemy? Remember that? When a country gathered together and fought against one common enemy, when we don't have a common enemy, guess what we do? We fight amongst ourselves. We begin looking at other people and tearing them down and saying, listen, you know what he did to me? You know what they did? You know all of these things? We begin tearing each other down. 
Listen, that should never happen in the community of the body of Christ. That should never happen in the community of the body of Christ. What should be happening is we should be commonly against sin. Commonly against Satan. Fighting a good warfare against that. We have a common salvation which brings about a common enemy. But I want you to see the second thing that we have. We have a common conviction. Common conviction or if you will common morals. Our country functions on laws that have been put in place. We, for the most part, for the most part, we agree to those laws. We live here in Canada. We live in St. Thomas or London or Elmer or wherever you're from. We live in these places and we agree to those common laws. And guess what? We expect everybody else to follow those laws. There's a speed limit on the 400 series highway. By the way, I'm very thankful that they raised it on the 402. A whole 10 kilometers an hour, they went up. 110. So thankful for that. I'm not sure if, if uh, the Stevensons are thankful for that. Let, hopes to get in a little bit faster here. Uh, they're from Strathroy. But understand this. When somebody flies by me at 150 kilometers an hour, whoa, take it easy, buddy. Where are you going so fast, right? Because we expect everybody to abide by the rules. If somebody breaks into my house, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I want people to respect and obey the rules because it's common. It's common courtesy. It's a common conviction. If we don't agree to the laws, we will either do something about it, try to change it, or we'll leave, move somewhere else. Listen, there are a lot of people in the world that are moving to Canada because they don't like what's going on in their country. That's a great opportunity common conviction. The Bible says this, how can two walk together except they be agreed? The Bible is full of principles, convictions, if you will, that we should be living our lives by. As a member of the body of Christ, you are submitting yourself to those common convictions, those common morals. You are submitting yourself to the authority of God. You are maintaining those common convictions. That's what we have. We get the opportunity to have common morals. But number three I want you to see is a common direction. Common direction. If you will, the church has a common mission. A mission. We have something that we want to get behind. Bible Baptist Church's common direction, common mission is simply this. To seek Christ and to share hope. To seek Christ and to share up. Again, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? They have to be going in the same direction. And we sat around as a staff. We thought long and hard, prayed about what we were going to do that everyone could get behind, that everybody could adopt as their mission. We want every single person in this community to go in the same direction. We want every single person to seek Christ and to share that hope. We want that. And as a community, you should be wanting that as well. We are trying to get behind that vision, head in a certain direction, keep moving forward toward Christ and toward sharing his hope. So we have a common common salvation, a common conviction, and a common direction. Those are all great things, but what does that look like practically? Those are all very high-level, theoretical type things. But what does that look like on a practical level? How is a church community important to me? How is it important to you? For those of you listening online, how is it important for you? How is a church important? Well, here's where we find Acts chapter 2. Turn there with me. Acts chapter 2, look at verse 42. Acts chapter 2, look at verse 42. The Bible says this, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things, watch this, common, all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued da- continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, 
praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This church, this first church, really shows us what the church community ought to look like. I want to give you three points. Number one, a church community ought to support. Support. Again, look with me in verse 45. They had all things common, verse 44. Verse 45 says, And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. The church ought to be a community that supports one another. Again, these people had all things common. They were selling their houses. They were selling their lands. They were selling their possessions. And they were taking those things and they were parting them to everybody who had need. So listen, hey, you don't have any money this week because you lost your job. Here's some money. Let me help you out. Hey, you don't have any food. Guess what? I have extra. Here, let me help you out. You don't have a house? I had an extra one I just sold. Let me buy you a house. This is the type of community that this, these people had. I don't know how far it went. All I know is they had all things common. Everything was common. They sold their possessions, gave to people who had need. I hope you understand this, and if you don't understand this, you will at some point. There will come a point in your life where you will need some type of support system where you will need people to gather around you and support you. The church, the body of Christ, should be that type of support system. Should be that type of, of community. When you are in your toughest spot, a church comes around you and they support you. I want you to turn over with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look with me in verse 24. The Bible says this, For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having, having given more abundant honor to that part, part which lacked. So the parts that are struggling, the parts that are lacking God has given them more abundant honor. So it's almost as if, uh, you know, in our body, when white blood cells, when something hurts, white blood cells start attacking that. That's kind of what the community of Christ ought to be. Hey, somebody's struggling, we ought to go not attack that person, but be there to support that person. Be there to help heal that person. Continue on in verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same watch, care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Listen, when one member of the body hurts, we all ought to hurt. You say, Pastor Yeomans, there is no way in the world I am volunteering to hurt. No way in the world. Well, here, let me, let me give you an illustration. I know several men and I know several ladies that have watched their spouses go through some very, very difficult times. Hard times, painful times. And guess what? Every single one of them has said, I wish I could take their pain for them. Do you know why? Because they are one. They are in love, which we'll look at just a little bit later. They are in love. They want to help. They don't want to see somebody that they love going through a very difficult time. The Bible says that we ought to bear one another's burdens. We ought to weep with them that weep and rejoice with them that do rejoice. We are to be helping one another. I had the uh, wonderful privilege of putting a roof on my house a little while ago. It was awesome. It was a great time. Had a great ton of fun. If you've ever roofed, it's really not that much fun. Um, but I saved myself a ton of money because I needed to. But one of the greatest things was when people were calling me and saying, hey, can I help you with your roof? Hey, can I, can I come up? When are you doing it next? I'd love to help you. Listen, that's the community that gets around and supports. Hey, you have a need? Let me be there. I may not be able to pay for your roof, Pastor Yeomans, but I can be there to help you put it on. 
That's the type of community we ought to be. Hey, when somebody's struggling, we're there to help. But also when someone is honored, we're there to rejoice with them. Hey, you just got a promotion at work? That is awesome. Hey, you just got a new car? That's wonderful. Hey, you just got a new house? Woohoo! This is great. But most of us don't do that, do we? We're like, oh, man, how come they get a new car? I need a new car. Oh, man, I want a promotion at work. Oh, man, why do you always? No, that's not what the community of Christ ought to be. We ought to be rejoicing with those that have been honored. That's the prescription that God gives for a great community. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Household of faith, the family of God. We ought to be doing things. We ought to be looking for opportunities to help all men, but especially our community, the community of our church. We should be looking for ways to support people. Each individual member of the church community should be looking for ways to help their other members. Not just Pastor Yeomans, not just the pastoral staff, every member. We should all be looking for ways to support someone else. And guess what? When we need that support, it'll be there. It'll be there for us. When we need it, it'll be there. That's the type of community that God wants to bring, a supporting community. But number two, I want you to see an encouragement, an encouraging community community. Go back to Acts chapter 2 with me. Look at verse 46. Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 46. The Bible says this, and they continuing daily with, look at this, one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want you to picture this with me. I want you to picture this church. This church that is going, spending days with each other, and they're of one mind, of one accord, and they're spending time together, and they're going house to house, and they're eating together, and they're singing together, and they're studying the Word of God together, and all things are common. Just a wonderful, beautiful picture of a church. And guess what? God is adding to that church daily. Now, you can't tell me that you wouldn't be encouraged by that. You can't tell me that that would excite you. You can't tell me how wonderful and awesome that would be. We can have that opportunity. They met, spent time together, encouraged, encouraged each other, lifted each other up. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. The Bible says this, Let us therefore follow after, these, after the things which make for peace. And the things wherewith one may edify another. You know what that means? That means we ought to be looking for ways to encourage one another. We ought to be looking for ways that we can say, hey, I want to encourage this person today. What can I do to encourage them? What can I do? Not, hey, Pastor Yeomans, you should call so and so. Hey, Pastor Holland, you ought to get with this person. No, hey, what can I do to encourage someone today? You might be thinking, well, it's pretty hard. You know what I do oftentimes to encourage people? I text them. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Hey, I'm thinking about you today. Hey, is there anything I can do for you? Listen, that's just one way. You could pick up the phone. And call someone. Listen, you might say, hey, I haven't seen so-and-so in, in a long time. Maybe they're at the 915 service or, or whatever. I haven't seen them in a long time. Pick up the phone and call someone. That's what the encouragement. How can I encourage someone today? That is what we ought to be doing. We ought to be following after those things. The problem with this is most of us look for ways that we can discourage someone. You would say, oh, Pastor Yeomans, I would never intentionally discourage someone. But here's what we do. 
Instead of looking for ways to encourage somebody, we look for ways on how to tear someone down. Hey, you've gone too far. You did the wrong thing. You haven't been to church in three or four weeks. And we begin to tear them down instead of encourage them. Encouragement is building up. Discouragement is tearing down. We look for the bad in people instead of looking for the good. That is so wrong. So wrong. We ought to be, listen, people are going to mess up. You understand that, right? You're, you are going to mess up. You are going to do something that you regret. You are going to. Do you want somebody to discourage you and kick you while you're down? Or do you want somebody to come alongside you and say, hey, I don't agree with what you did, but let me encourage you. Let me bring you back. The Bible says that ye which are spiritual uh, ought, to, ought to restore them. The goal is restoration, bringing people back to a place where they can worship and serve God and be in the community again. People need a community that encourages them, that don't kick them while they're down, but encourage them. But the Bible says a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. I don't think they do that on their own. The community of people around them, rising and helping them to get up. Every one of us needs to be an encouragement. Let me ask you this question. Who can you call, text, email, check up on uh, Instagram, whatever? Who can you today encourage? Who can you today be an encouragement to? And don't stop with today. Go this week. And then go the month. And then go the year and look back and see how well you were an encouragement to people. Listen, that's the type of community that we ought to be. That Bible Baptist Church ought to be. And guess what? When you need encouragement, it will be there for you as well. Because that's the type of community we ought to be. All of these things boil down to the last point, and that's love. A community... The, the body of Christ ought to be supportive, ought to be encouraging because we love each other. We love each other. The body of Christ must have the love of Christ. The body of Christ must have the love of Christ. Christianity for a long time has gotten a bad rap of being hateful. Some of that might be true. Perhaps we have been a little bit condescending. Perhaps we have been a little bit uh, 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 discouraging. Maybe we have been hateful. Now understand me. We do not and should not agree with sin. We should not be like, yeah, you know what? It doesn't matter. Sin doesn't matter. No, that's not what I'm being a proponent of at all. We, we need to be against sin, but guess what? We can be loving in our approach to sinners. You know how, it's, how I know it's possible? Because God did it. God made it possible for us to love people as he loved them. In fact, he said, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love them as I have loved them. How did Christ or God love them? You know what? God hates sin. The Bible says that back in Noah's day, he destroyed the entire earth except for eight people because of sin. He destroyed an entire city, Sodom and Gomorrah, because of sin. God does not want sin, yet there came a time in, his, in this eternal life where he said, I want to be with these people regardless of their sin. And he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sin. He loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave. So understand me, God does not agree with your sin. God does not agree with anyone's sin, but we can be loving in our approach. We can be loving in our approach to sin. His love, God's love, caused him to be a sacrificing servant. A sacrificing servant. I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. 
Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible says this, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. You have a liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Watch how you're supposed to use the liberty. But by love, serve one another. You see, we often look at our lives and we go, Hey, I've got religious liberty. I can do what I... You can't tell me that I'm not supposed to do that. I I am free to do, to make the choices that I want to make. And we use that for an occasion to do what we want to do. But here's what God says. Listen, don't do that. Use your liberty to serve in love someone else. You are not free to do what you want. You are free to help others in their need. Love them and serve them. Every one of us has things that we want to do. Every one of us wants, uh, has things that, that we are looking forward to do. But hear me, we should not be looking every man on his own things. But every man also on the things of others. We ought to be looking, hey, how can I serve that person this week? How can I serve this person? Think about this. If you're married, if you're married, think about what your marriage would be like if you served one another. What if you in honor preferred one another above yourself? Think about how that marriage would look like. Think about the community that that would ascribe if every one of us said, how can I serve you this week? No, no, I don't want you to serve me. How can I serve you? How can I give to you? How can I do something for you? We've often said this here at Bible Baptist. You can serve without loving, but you cannot love without serving when you love you're going to serve when you love someone you are going to serve again all of us thinking ah come on pastor Jones, i'm busy we're talking about being the type of community that god wants us to be and so often we get busy with what we want to do and we forget about those people that need We forget about those people that we are to be serving as members of the body of Christ. We want to be served. (laughs) Some people would say, well, the Bible says you're supposed to serve me. Pastor Yeoman said, each member serving one another, so you ought to be serving me. Husbands, do not use that on your wives this afternoon. Don't do it. Instead, we should be looking to love and serve others. And guess what? When we need that love and service, it'll be there for us. Because that's what a community is. We need to be loving and serving each other. I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 3. I want you to see that we ought to be sacrificing. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says this. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You know what John 3, 16 says? talks about God laying down his life for us. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, in reference to John 3, 16, because Christ laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself, gave himself willingly to be placed on a cross for you for love's sake. Just like Christ did, we ought to. You say, Pastor Yom, I'm supposed to sacrifice? I'm supposed to give up something to help and serve someone else? If we're going to be a biblical community, if we're going to be a community, a biblical church, then yes, we ought to be sacrificing. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time really, really, we laid down our lives to help someone? Really, like, when was the last time you 
laid down your life to help a family member. Listen, we don't hear about that type of sacrificial love on a regular basis. In fact, when we do, those are the stories we, we share on social media. Those are the ones that we say, hey, check this out. This, this man is amazing. Or this lady, look what she did for this person. She sacrificed herself. We hold those things up on high and say, wow, these people are awesome. And I agree. They are. But this should be not just every once in a while. This should be a common practice in the community of a church. People sacrificing for other people. The body of Christ sacrificing the body of Christ. Each individual, each of us here this morning, each watching online, should be willing to sacrifice themselves for someone else. Again, that's what Jesus did. Jesus gave himself for us. He died on the cross to cleanse us from our sins. We ought to be looking for someone that we can sacrifice for. And guess what? When we need somebody to sacrifice for us, it'll be there. Because that's a community. Let me ask you, are you a humble, helpful member of the community? Are you a sacrificial servant of the community? Who are you? What type are you? Are you somebody that just says, you need to serve me. Give me. If we're going to close the distance and separate this division and bring us closer together, as the Bible says, fitly joined together, if we are going to be that type of community we are going to have to strive to be supportive, strive to be an encouragement, and we're going to have to strive to love others. Perhaps you don't even know what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. Maybe you don't even, you're you're not a member of Bible Baptist Church. Listen, we would love to help you get plugged in. We would love to help you have a community. I want you to understand this community is not perfect. But we strive to be a community that is supportive, encouraging, and loving. If you're not a member of this community, we'd love to help you with that. You may not even know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Listen, if you don't, again, we'd love to help. We'd love to know how you can become a part of the body of Christ. We want you to become a productive member of the, of the, of the body. Excuse me. So this morning... What will it be? What type of member are you? Are you someone that will give or are you someone that will take? At some point, we, both, we need to be both. But let's be members of the body, the community of the body of Christ. We want to give you some time this morning to write down a key thought or a decision that you've taken from this message. And so if you would, take a pen and piece of paper out Take your phone out, open the notes app or something. Write down something that you've made a decision about today. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. today online at Bible Baptist Church, and we really appreciate you uh, joining us. Uh, We hope it was a help to you, and if it was, would you please take some time and just share that 
If you know somebody, maybe that uh, this would be a help for as well. We also want you just to directly message that to them. Um, it is our goal here at Bible Baptist just to be a help. And that's all we want to do. And if we can be a help to you, maybe you have some questions. Uh, maybe you need some answers about what God is calling you to do. Then there's a connect card. There's a link in the description. And you can just fill that out and that'll come right to us. And we'll be able to take that and answer any questions that you have. Maybe you're not comfortable doing that. Uh, if you want to direct message us through Facebook or uh, even Instagram, we, we can do that as well. Or text message or phone call or email. We have all kinds of different ways that you can reach out to us. Um, it's just our goal to help, and we want to be a help. So we hope today was a help, and if you need any more, we would love to be able to do that for you. Thank you so much for joining us today at Bible Baptist Church Online.